I would like to give a short introduction to Meso. Um, this presentation comes up, comes along because uh, one year ago, I opted to help out uh, cleaning up uh, or ma co-maintaining a tool upstream. And one of the first things which got like promoted or uh, requested from the community was to uh, to change from make file based system to an uh, meso based uh, build system and this is basically now the result of of uh, one year playing with that tool and learning things how to use or not to use and um, as everybody loves auto tools still um, you should reconsider that let, let me let me show you why so oops wrong so one thing obviously auto tools is famous for is that you get a consistent um way to use it as user i think it it works okay -ish. i mean there are things which are not easy to use if you start cross compiling or so you you have to figure out how where to pass stuff in and so on but in the end it works pretty consistently and i mean uh, it's also very easy to integrate into an rpm spec file and so on so there's not it's good right so everybody may most people would agree with that one um so there's there's something happening and uh, everyone knows that who's building from source we s keep on seeing new build system pop up so famous ones are obviously scorn cmake qmake waf and the list goes on and for me recently it was meso suddenly be quite fame or pops up everywhere and and uh, my question was uh, why and it's not just me saying that um there are Fedora, the Fedora project counted between, what's that, eight years, um, over 600 projects from a, a different build system to Meson. So there's, there was something happening in that regard. And obviously the question is, why? Why is this? Um, so maybe first we have to go step backwards and, and or back and, and, and look at the, why someone decides to go away with something which works obviously um, and it seems to be that auto tools has yeah not not a huge fan base let's put it this way so i i found in the internet several blog posts on on why they don't want to use auto tools anymore and some people have very opinion uh, voices on that one. And uh, well, after after working with Auto Tools for a while or two, I I understand the reason why they are putting or having this opinion. So first thing to know about Auto Tools is obviously we have a huge set of of tools additional tools which are involved. So we have, from autoconf, automake to lib tool, then you have this macro language M4, which is used for reprocessing macros, something like that. Anyway, it's a bit arcane. Uh, it's hard to use, at least for me. <laughs> and then we have other tools which are usually involved, make, get text, package config, GCC sometimes to figure out how stuff with SED, Perl, and the list goes on. So there's a <clears throat> quite a huge language or different languages involved, different uh, barriers and if you write one of those configuration files, you know that you always have to switch between different um, languages. So sometimes you write in auto make language and then you switch to whatever and coming back and it's, it's not easy to get it right. And another thing is obviously if you have so many tools involved, um, the, the order how they are used and, and uh, executed is complicated this is as this diagram here shows just a very simple version it can be more complex and and it's, as as anything which is so complicated with that it's hard to understand 
if something goes wrong. I mean, there are people, I agree, they are com absolutely comfortable with that. They learned that from years of years of using and they know exactly where to touch stuff and so on. But for anyone who's, who's maintaining his own little project or even bigger projects and doesn't want to spend a lot of time figuring out details, uh, <laughs> um, it's, it's hard. Yeah, it is for editor, any, any, any editor, right? Um, and as you can see, you, you have to touch an uh, auto, uh, usually a project ships in an auto gen SH shell script. And yeah, even that one is, is not standard this size. That means people uh, or co projects have different configuration default settings and so on. And that not always makes sense. Anyway, um, to summarize this, so we have a two, basically too many languages, too many configuration tools. It's complex to master and you have a lot of, of build dependencies and steps which results basically in a very slow execution of the configuration steps. And one, one thing which is sadly also true is severe bugs like the make file or make the make file execution, a uh, job execution uh, bug, which haunted the, the, the basically everyone which where uh, where the job execution is not coordinate, uh, coordinated that means if you have parallel running make files with the job this uh, job um, server running um, you could run easily into a parallel or pal build makes race conditions and that just got fixed after one decade um, so yeah it's that, that's also a, a bit of a problem that cer certain box or certain feature requests are not getting addressed by the maintainers of those projects, which is kind of understandable, but still, yeah. So instead of complaining, let's have a look at an uh, meso. Um, so the 3048 meter view, or for those who are in metric system, um, the the Meso system, build system is basically uh, are two tools. One is Meso set itself, and one is Ninja. Ninja is the tool which X is. You could say it's like make, make file or make, which just executes the build step, and Meso is the the configure part. Um, those tools are completely independent developed. Um, they're both pretty major, I would say, uh, work pretty well. Um, so Maison basically and also Ninja have their own DSL, domain specific language. Um, while Maison has a very high level expression language, and Ninja has a very low level, which is not uh, designed for writing or not writing by hand, it's it's more for writing by tools, configuration tools, um, but it's still readable. So it's easy to read, still easy to read, but it's very verbose. So you, you usually don't want to write Ninja files by hand. Um, Meso also has um, opted for, has a strong opinion on certain things. Uh, one thing is it should not be Turing complete, so you're not you can't do any old things you might want to do and on those steps. Um, for example, there are no template rules, uh, which is kind of disappointing, let's say it this way. Um, but has it has a, some 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 upsides. So because there are no template rules and also no use defined commands, um, you have to write everything explicit. Um, we're coming back to that point later, but basically what that means, you have to be explicit. So you have really to write, I want, I have a source file and these are my targets basically. So you have to really be um, explicit in how you write stuff down. Um, build, or the build step with Ninja, as I said, is basically you, you don't have a lot to do with it. Um, you might use some, some sub commands to figure out what's going on, but 
basically it stays out of the way. So um, Captain Hinsight already tells you, yes, there are warts. Yes, there are things which are not so easy to, or you would say, ah, why is not this and that? But in the end, uh, as I said, if you if you are just a maintainer of a project and you are not interested to spend a lot of time figuring out details, choose your poison, basically, uh, is, the, is the saying here. Uh, so you could also use a different build system, but let's, for the sake for it, let's stay with Meson. So feature tour meaning I give you a sales pitch now um, by showing a, a short demonstration. So this, this, in this demonstration, we just create a new empty directory. Oh, what's the pointer here? Step into it, and then we execute the init um, call. Um, in this example, it's C-based C because, as I said, I, I was transferring a C-based code base. That's why I just stick with, I know that part. I'm not sure how it deals with different languages, but I suppose it works. Anyway, um, so if you execute the init file or the init step, it creates uh, an, an empty or a template meson build file. And we can easily just um, execute that one. So meson also says there's no entry builds. This, only out of tree build possible. That's one of those uh, very strong opinions they uh, they have. Personally, I don't care. Um, and the, the good thing about out of tree builds, if there's if they work fine, you can have different build configuration and just use one of those like debug build and, and the normal build or uh, a static build, whatever. And you can just build those uh, uh, builds very easy without the configuration step to uh, to do every time, but that's personal preference. And as you can see, it oops, oh no, that's not what I wanted. Sorry, something went wrong. I think I have Zoom. Okay, back to working. Right, so um, so this it's not 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 very spectacular. And if you if you look at the generated Meson build file, um, there are uh, three commands in there. The, the one is the, the project, executable and test. Project needs to be in every uh, project file or Meson file. It, it needs to be exist there. Um, it has to be the first command, and it consists out of a name of the project, a language, um, a version string. Version string has to be static, so you can't. Um, you can work around but basically um, you should not use like git um, describe or anything like that here because if you uh, tar that thing up you lose you don't have the uh, you can't execute basically git anymore the git commands because you have a tar file uh, and there are further reasons why this is a static string but if you uh, you can work around it if you accept some some downsides um, then we have a, a few com a configuration options like uh, options like uh, the warning level for the compiler. Um, there are more things you can do here, but that's the, the bare bone. Then the next is um, executable. Executable is a command, and the important the important thing here basically is the install um, argument. So any target which gets installed or any ex yeah, any build command which gets installed will be added to the default build target. Um, if you don't have that, uh, it won't be built. So Meson is always tracking from the source file to the to the, inst the target, basically a build target, uh, all the dependency for you. And if you don't model this dependency, it won't know it, it won't execute it. So that's also one of those strong opinions they got in the project. And yeah, it's not very uh, difficult here. So you have an executable, a demo. Oops, why is it? Um, the, de the, the, the demo one is the executable binary name, the source file. And, and as you can see, executable returns you an object. This is the exit. This is a dependency object and you can pass that in to the test command 
and um, this test command is just called basic. That's all. And okay. Um, and building is very simple. You, you can use Meso compile directly, or you can or you can use Ninja to compile it. Um, yeah, not nothing really to see be seen here. Um, the nice thing, as I said, now we have already the tests uh, in place. Um, yeah, not very uh, interesting, but it's all there. Everything works with three lines of code or configuration. And the nice thing is that Meso has a lot of cool features. One of those is, for example, you can run now this test in a repeatable fashion in GDP. And if it fails, your GDP session will stop at that point and you can debug that. Things like that. Uh, it's very, it, it's easy. I mean, you can do that with other tools as well, but you have it built in and it just works nice. Um, and now if we look to the, the build directory, basically uh, you see you have a Ninja file, you have, um, I mean, the things you would expect from uh, as, as um, from the build to build framework. So you have a build of uh, a list of files which explain uh, the internal state. You have log files where you can look at. And yeah, it's it's not very, I mean, if, if you start debugging stuff because you don't know what, how it works, you usually find a good place here. Uh, in that directory, you find what's going on. And it's usually not that difficult to figure out what's not working. Anyway, um, so here have we, we have an example here from the Ninja files. Uh, it looks similar to Makefile to my eyes, but it's not. Um, and you can see it's, you have, uh, everything is written out. There's no template, anything. It's really just exactly how you would type it on the command line, except some um, simple uh, 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 text replacement, uh, so the C compiler or the dependency files. So anyway, um, as I said, Ninja has also some uh, built-in tools for analyzing what's going on. Um, so we uh, these sub-tools consist that you can look at dependency graphs. Obviously, the clean target always exists. Um, you can inspect um, different things which might be handy. We're going to look at a few of those right now. <laughs> so for example, we can look at the existing targets. That means what you can build. And uh, as you can see, uh, we have uh, we have support for tax, C tax, C scope, install, deinstall, uninstall, building the distribution bench. Uh, you can even have the benchmarks and so on. As you can see, those targets exist out of the box and uh, are. You don't have to do a lot of getting a lot for those to getting working. Anyway, um, instead of looking the. Ninja file directly, you can also just use Ninja front end and then you get really the command line um, which get executed and might help if, you, if you're if looking if all the, the commands or the, the, the correct arguments are passed in, you can verify here, very simple. Anyway, um, also very helpful in larger projects are the build dependencies, um, you can can generate a dot a dot file and uh, and visualize that, but you can also use the the browser directly. So it um, you have a br uh, browser session where you can just click through and see which file depends on which one and so on. If you're interested to figure out why, for example, something is not built or why it is built or why it depends on something else, you that's I mean usually. Sometimes helpful. Let's put it that way. Anyway, uh, one thing which I found really interesting, you don't have to track header files yourself. So it does it for you. Uh, you don't have to do it ma manually. So it just figures that out by the, uh, by the tool chain. And as you can see, it can look at with, with the Ninja tool and see what's going on. So, um, 
this was basically the sales pitch for the tool. And uh, the next section is the, the things I had to figure out how to migrate an existing project um, using Maison. And one of the first things is obviously adding a library to your build chain. And this is, I found it very simple and it's there, a, a, it's a very powerful um, additional command. Let's let's first um, look at the simplest version we have. So you have a dependency command, give the name of the package, and then you can say, I really want to have the dependency there. So the, the configuration step will fail if it's not found. Um, and then here we have, a, uh, you just add the dependencies to the executable and you give you can give a list of, of dependencies there. And the, the thing is the dependency command will use different um, backends to figure out if the library is there. So it uses, I think, CMake, package config, and so on. The list goes on. And actually it's it's uh, platform neutral. So this stuff would also work on Windows or, or Mac OS as far as I understood. Anyway, if you execute now or do the set, so if you do the setup step, um, you can see here it found uh, the glib version uh, on my uh, installation and everything is done from that point. So this is the whole step you have to do just to add a dependency on your project. Um, and you can also obviously make it um, more flexible in the sense of that you don't require a library dependency, but if it's there, you can use it. Uh, so in this step, um, first we create a, config a configuration object and we change the required to false. And as I said, uh, Maison likes to have it uh, in a explicit way you could leave that away because the default is false but um, the upstream community tells you be explicit it makes makes everything a bit simpler and uh, so please do that if you use it then you get the dependency object and now we can ask it if it has found that and we set on the configuration object uh, uh, a new variable or what's a nice new entry which says okay i'm there or not and then in the final step we can write out the config h file header file um there you go um in that uh scenario it, it has been found on um, you can have different configuration settings there if you want to but in the end as you can see it's it's that simple in case your project you're depending on is not shipping any CMake files or, um, or a package config file, which is the case for huge table FS, um, you can also use the compiler to figure out if it finds the header file. In this case, you ask um, for a compiler, a compiler here, and then just with has header, you execute the compiler, it uses the pre uh, to figure out if it finds the header. Note, this is not um, building a binary, it's just using the, the pre-compiler um, to figure out if it finds the header file. If it finds it, you can, for example, here um, add the dependency object with find library, then it, it tries to uh, figure out where the library is and adds it. And if it's not found here, we just make it that way that we we have the variable have leap huge table fs or to set to false, and we do the same thing as before, setting the config uh, configuration data with that, and that's all. I mean, this is one of the variation um, to figure out if a, if a, if a project is there or not. But anyway. In case you need to figure out other types or other uh, things to configure your uh, project, one one thing is to use the set zero, uh, one or zero. This example, you can see we have the C compiler again, 
And in this time, we really compile this, this small program we embed here. And we try to figure out if the type of operator uh, is the operator. Uh, what's that? Um, yeah, the type of thing is supported by the compiler. And also very cool is, is if the Indian thing, you just ask the, here, the host machine object, what type of Indian it is, and you can set that in the config file. Anyway, so that part was very simple, straightforward. There's, there's nothing really things which could get you upset. Now we're coming to the part which is working around some limitations. Uh, one of those is, um, as I said, there's you have to be explicit and have list every target and every um, source file explicitly. Um, in some cases, this is not something which work or scales well. In in my in my case, it was the documentation. So the project uses kernel doc as source and. What I wanted to have is how to build from the source code all the documentation. So the trick here is basically leave the Maison domain and use an external script or program, whatever, which generates you on during runtime the targets. So the first step here is basically we have a small script which um, does nothing else than uh, looking for the function signature or the signature of the kernel doc uh, thing. So we just passing the, the, the header file, which is passed in and looking for the kernel um, doc signature and just um, echo that back to the, to, to the standard out. The same, as, so we do it for functions, for structs and enums. So that's basically the, the, the trick to get the, the data out of the header files. Now, the more not so nice part. So let's, let's go through that example here. So first thing is um, we need the binaries. Um, so find program helps uh, is locating in your source tree the, the, the executables or files you are interested. It returns your kernel doc object. We do the same for the script I, uh, I showed you uh, the slide before. So this is called list man pages. And uh, here we also have the example of how to get options from the command line. So uh, in this uh, example, it's possible to define the man, pay, the man deer over the command line. And this is how you get it out from, from Maison. So, ooh, man. Okay, I figure. So, next step is then um, sources are is is a vi variable containing all my source header files or the, the header files, and we're gonna iterate over all each file. Um, now the next step is to run the command list pay or the the shell, the shell script. This is done passing in the argument is file. This is the uh, executable object and we have check true for for just seeing if the the executable or the, the shell script or whatever um, returns success or fails then we have we capture the output in the out variable and or object i have to say then we we can extract the standard out and do a simple um, line splitting. So we get basically an array or a list. And now we do gon gonna iterate over every, every entry. And now the next thing we have to do is this custom target. And as I said, every, um, you have to track the dependencies and the final or the, the, the important part is the install step so if you have an install installable target this will be added to the normal build dependencies so this custom target wouldn't be executed if the install argument was missing for example but because it's there it will be automatically added to the normal normal build chain and here we do some trickery with naming so that the target has a proper name then um 
we pass into a sub command basically uh, the argument again it's the file um, we expect or saying the output the name of the output is the is is this part um, we have to use the capture argument for kernel doc because kernel doc writes the output to the standard out um, and yeah that's it basically and you, uh, so we if you can do a lot of more things if you want to but as I said this is a kind of tricky to get right but eventually um i've 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 spent some time to figure out and after i've i've done that it just works and uh, not many complaints so far so um after the let's say dynamic targets let's have an, an uh to one of my favorite features of the tool um as i told you a uh, dependency object is able or the dependency command is able to figure out if uh, uh, external dependency and one one very nice feature it has you can use this fallback um which or they call it also sub projects which means in case you can't find it use uh, the fallback mechanism meaning um if you build you uh, you config during the configure step um you don't find the json c library for example use uh, uh, your own version basically and you express that in that uh, with the fallback you gave it a name and then depend uh, what it's called or the dependency object basically we we'll see a couple of slides why it's called like this um so oh just again um so this is this is how you do this fallback feature enable it and the next question obviously is <clears throat> what kind of fallbacks are, uh, are maintained so the fallback is coming from upstream it's it's living uh, it's maintained by by the up, uh, meson community and they provide basically a wrapper for a, a bunch of projects and you can look at those uh, directly with meson wrap list and then you get the projects which are available and one of those is also json c for example and to to make that working basically um you have to create a directory called sub projects it has to call be called like this there's no way to call it differently and then you can just install the rep file the rep file is describing the the version you are, want to use and and as you can see the the contents is pretty simple in this case it says uh, which is the directory build directory name where to get it um this case in this example it's a tar file um with some hashes and so on and as you can see here in the last last line you have this provides line which tells you what what this pre project is providing and this is the thing which you have to end uh, end to, or add to the, the dependency of the command um, there are different wrap types available you can have git trees and a couple of more of, uh, if i remember correctly so i've just used the wrap file or um, the the git file so this is the way for example you can tie it's in a sense it's git submodules but more um, okay got it but a bit more powerful um, because it's uh, integrated into the build chain directly anyway um, if you have done that um, you can actually use it directly and for example you can control the download behavior of the wrap uh, mode or uh, if it should use the download or should never use it this is interesting if you want to do uh, um, completely offline builds um, and as you can see okay we start through and um, and for json c we're going to download now the this the tar file unpack it on the sub projects and we're going to patch it um, the patch is adding the 
meso files on top of the upstream project so this is really the upstream release they uh, it's not um it's really the one-to-one -one copy of the upstream release of from JSON C. It's just hosted by them um, on this uh, address. Yeah. Anyway, um, after Meso, all those Meso tricks. Uh, a quick view at Ninjas. Especially one question is why it's pretty cool. In my opinion, is it's fast and fast means in this sense. Um, rebuild times are extremely fast. Um, if you compare Make to Ninja, in this example, we have um, uh, a setup containing 1,000, 10,000, and 100,000 C files. And if you just compile them freshly from a clean build, basically uh, the difference between those two tools are very small. And the reason is, pretty obviously you are uh, compile time bound, uh, bounded and, and that means the the overhead from any build dependency or uh, figuring out what to do is very very small because you have to do everything but the uh, situation changes a lot if you actually building uh, or have a dirt um, um built already your tool and you're just changing one file on whatever uh, it's very fast to figure out what to do and um this is a logarithmic that means for one of 100,000 c files this example make takes roughly 100 seconds while make is uh, ninja is able to do that in one second so this is in my opinion pretty uh, um interesting or a uh, nice thing speed up um, and if you really are interested in you can also look at stats if you want to figure out why it's taking taking so long but in my, for my for my experiments i never ended up there anyway one also very cool feature in my opinion is the um, cross build support of the tooling so if you want to do cross builds um, you can pro, um, write down your tool chains in a any style file um, containing all the compiler things and can even set some properties and also um, is the tool or Meso really understands the differentiation between build host target and uh, one more host and um, you just write it once and then you can um, give that over to the uh, command line and everything works and uh, also what, what's very nice i haven't that's not it's not an example in the example here you can also add the uh, a wrapper for execution or for the cross build execution basically so you can can give the qemu target here and then you could actually run the tests, the, the PowerPC test on your host system. And the good thing here is you just write it once and it's configured correctly and don't have to pass over the command line, huge command lines. And then, yeah, that's, it's, it's very nice, especially if you're also running that in, in a CI setup. Um, anyway, if you, for example, have to cross build stuff and and even have uh, right uh, creating idl or have in, the, in uh, additional build targets basically um here's a small example how you could do that so for example we want to execute this generator yeah five minutes i know <laughs> we want to execute this uh anyway if you have questions just interrupt me please uh it's not important that i end the talk anyway um so for example this uh, we want to run this generator locally but uh as native execute in a cross cross compile environment so you can see we just pass in it should be executed natively it it creates um through the generator some templates so you pass in the argu uh, the input argument of the output argument here those two and you get the new generated sources so as you can see, it's it's fairly simple to get that right, and you don't have to spend a lot of time which compiler is, is used and so on. It it works. And 
the big question always is, ah, oh, yeah, but I don't like Python because uh, Meson is written in Python and uh, Ninja is uh, in, I don't know, C, C++. I can't remember. Anyway, uh, for bootstrap or really minimal systems, um, you can use alternative implementations. For example, there's Muon. It's written in POC 99. Um, it has, a, a, I think, no dependency. But if you have, you don't provide any dependency, you, or for certain features you need dependency, like like libcurl for 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 the fallback thing, or um, in Summary. As I said, I mean, this is very simple. You can use that. And the reason why you can use those alternative implementation, Meson itself is um, is a specification of the language. And there's a reference a referent implementation, which is uh, Meson itself. Um, and because there's, there's more than one project implementing them, the, the, the language is very clean and works, has a lot they figured all the, the nasty details out before they um, added them to the specification. And yeah, you can you can run that basically on a very small system if needed. Yeah, that, that's it. Um, if you have questions, please shoot. And uh, as I hope if you have an auto tools based project that you consider switching to something else. <laughs> All right, no one complains. Everyone is fetching coffee. Excellent. Yeah, I think we call it a day, right? Somebody's typing. Ah, okay. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah, that's so. My my take on on the situation that. It's it's some it's a learn curve. You have to go through some things to figure out how to use it. Um, but uh, my experience is is basically if you have done your homework, it gets out of the way. And oh, one thing I really should mention is the upstream community is extremely friendly and helpful. So for in my example or my situation, I was um, doing that all on, on GitHub. And suddenly, on the maintainers from Meson appeared on my project, or I'm working on, and explained me stuff, fixed stuff in my projects which I done wrong in a in a Meson configuration. And I mean, I didn't ask for help, and he showed up and just fixed it. As I mean, as it's extremely uh, helpful, but um, you might run into one or two issues where they have very strong opinion how to do it or how not to do it. And they say, no, we don't support that feature you're asking for. And we will never. Yes, and the good thing is um, the integration into our configure uh, spec files is, I mean, you just drop it and replace the uh, make files with, with the Meson macros and works also and also, as i said for example for the fallback stuff it automatically expands to uh this disabling the, the the download the 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 fallback mode is disabled so you can't even do it wrong the well one thing there is maybe you have to figure out some install paths they are not the same in my experience, for example, the uh, I think I, I was playing, uh, got it wrong with the man deer page uh, location. That was a bit wrong, but yeah, nothing serious. I mean, as I said, you figure, uh, you play with it and figure out very quickly where to tune stuff, and then it works pretty good. I mean, as I said, it's it does the job, and that's a nice thing. It doesn't require you to spend a lot of, of time 
um, maintaining it. So I'm using this now for one year, and in that year, it was the initial effort to get it ported, and after that, it just worked. And I don't have to learn M4. <laughs> Okay, more typing. Yep. Yeah, well, I regularly, when I mention M4, I don't get it. They say, oh, it's a perfect tool. It is so nice. But yeah, <laughs> I think I'm pro probably just too young to appreciate the M4. And Perl. Okay, one question flying in. Yeah, see, there's always someone who likes M4. <laughs> That's exactly what I said. All right, I think I'm done. Um, if you have more questions, please just contact me or if you need some help to migrate your projects, I'm, I'm glad to help out and share my experience or the, the things you might need to figure out. And as I said, the, oh, oh yeah, the upstream community and the documentation is excellent. Really, there's a lot of really good maintained documentation.